but it's so cold here. There's actual snow falling right now. The wind is so strong, it's absolutely freezing. So we're gonna have to make our way back. Stat. Hey guys, it's about 7 a.m. here in Hunza and I'm just getting ready to go on a pretty serious, pretty challenging trek. This valley that I'm going to is meant to be a super historical and kind of mythical place. I'm meant to be going there and back today, which is a good eight hours of walking in a single day. And the weather is looking kind of shaking and a little bit unpredictable. We'll get onto the trek soon, but first things first. Do not underestimate the importance of a good, hefty breakfast before a trek. And my host family here in Jamalabad, they know this very well. So this is what we're having for breakfast. Here we've got local bread called charpik. Right here is local cheese called mirik. And here is a fried egg. This is the real breakfast of the champions. And everything here is made fresh and locally from ingredients right from the village. One last cup of chai and it's time to start getting ready for a trek that will probably take us the entire day. So Pervez is my host and my guide to Avgarj Valley today. Is this going to be really difficult? Uh, not too much. It takes only uh, three, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? Uh, for you, three hours. <laughs> exactly. So, let's go. We started our trek in the picturesque village of Jamalabad, which is located between Sost and Pasu in Hunza, and it's full bloom here. But our destination lies somewhere quite different, deep in these valleys. The route there is not for the faint-hearted. You're gonna have to walk along footbridges, riverbeds, stones and do some serious climbing and jumping. Oh my god! See what I mean? Some parts even gave me an adrenaline rush. My turn! <laughs> slow, 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 slow. Good. <laughs> and then there was a surprise. High up on the mountain face, we spotted a herd of ibex. These elusive mountain animals are quite hard to find, and we just couldn't believe our luck. Look at how majestic they are, how fast they climb up these impossible slopes. We could have stayed there all day just watching these majestic creatures, but alas, we had to keep going on to Avgarj. We were getting closer and closer every step of the way until finally we reached. That's it, over there, that's that's the valley. <laughs> it's only been two hours, not three and a half. <laughs> this is Avgarj Valley. There is no road access here. You can only come here on foot. And perhaps, given just how pristine it is, that's not such a bad thing. It's all open space, grazing animals, and full-on serenity. And given that Avgarj is one of the oldest Wahi settlements in the area, there's a lot of history here too. Right now we are in the ancient part of Avgarj village and nobody really knows how old these buildings are, but they are pretty elements and wind swept. You can see all these buildings are just, you know, made out of this raw stone and old wood. Pretty amazing. Right there is a bit of a tower. Not really sure what that's for. And here, this is definitely a mosque, an old mosque that is now shut down. Look how beautiful it is, look at all the wood carvings around the door. Just amazing. A piece of history right here in this remote valley here in Hunza. But our trek wasn't over yet. We still had to reach Boibo Valley, just an hour away. We're climbing higher and higher towards Boibo Valley. We're taking a shortcut. But Pervez warned me that the shortcut is much harder than the long route. I am the winner. Pervez is the winner. He got there first. 
I was filming the entire time. <laughs> I have an excuse. And finally, after all that climbing, we got there. Right there is Boibor Valley with Boibor Glacier, which has receded over the last few years due to climate change. And right there is Briar Valley with a link all the way to Shimshal Valley. This is the power of the mountains and especially the Karakoram range here in Hunza. The peaks and valleys and nature that emerge right in front of your eyes are just so awe-inspiring, like nowhere else in the world. But soon after we reached, the weather began to break very quickly. It's so cold here, there's actual snow falling right now. I managed to get the drone shot just before the snow starts, but the wind is so strong, it's absolutely freezing, so... We're gonna have to make our way back. Stat. Oh my god. And we're really high up in the mountains, over 3,000 meters, probably close to 3,500. So the air feels really thin. And it's extremely windy, very cold, biting cold. All the mountains right here, they're just covered in snow. The fog is setting. How cold is it? Uh, <laughs> Very, cold? Very cold. We knew that we had to get down to Avgaj as soon as possible. The snow got more intense as did the winds. But the village seemed deserted. There seemed to be nobody there. Until we knocked on a door. It turns out there was somebody there. Bidi Nigar, who is the auntie of Pervez. And she's just invited us in for a cup of chai. <laughs> This is what we had been dreaming of for the last two hours. A warm fire in the shelter of a local home and of course, chai. A warm cup of chai. Here it is, fresh chai with the freshest of milk. Whew, perfect for this cold, cold day. Ah. Amazing. <laughs> so much. <laughs> of course, we had seconds too. As much as we wanted to stay with Bibi Nigar in her warm home, we had to go back to Jamalabad. All right, it's time to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Shabosh, bye bye. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. As we started walking, the weather eventually lifted and we reached Jamalabad safely. And despite all the beauty of Avgarj Valley, there's one memory that will remain forever in my heart. And that's the memory of Bibi Nagar, her home, her fire, and her chai. Shabash. <laughs>